Hi, welcome to my channel on Mission with Elsie. I'm Elsie Cook, and today I share with you the second C to knowing God's will, the correcting work of the Holy Spirit. The moment you surrender your life to the Lord, there's two things that happen. One, the Lord God seals you with His Holy Spirit. We read this in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, 22, where Paul wrote, He has identified us as His own by placing the Holy Spirit in our hearts as the first installment that guarantees everything He has promised us. Other versions actually uses the term seal. A seal indicates ownership. When, when we accepted Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior, Jesus takes ownership of our lives. He marks us. He seals us with the presence of this Holy Spirit. The second thing that happens when we accept Jesus as per our personal Lord and Savior is we become the temple of the Holy Spirit. In 1 Corinthians 6.19, Paul wrote, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. The third person in the Trinity teaches us in all things. He guides us in all things. John writes about this truth in John 14, 26. He wrote, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you everything I have said to you. Notice there are two key terms that are used here. One is he will teach you in all things. The, the second one is he will remind you. Within the context of this passage, John was writing to an audience who saw Jesus face to face. But in our days, Jesus is he's resurrected. We had an encounter with him through our salvation. However, we learn of his teachings through the Bible. If we are not reading the Bible, what is there for the Holy Spirit to remind us of? If you are seriously wanting to know God's will, it's very important that you and I grow in our knowledge of Scripture. The importance of knowing the Scripture and the guidance of the Holy Spirit has been highlighted to me as a missionary in India. When I was in India, I remember praying for a woman who claimed that she saw satanic uh, activity in her house. And so we went to her house and we prayed and I was explaining everything to her, why idolatry and some of the things that she was doing was not, in accordance to God's will, but she seems not to understand what I was saying. And so finally, while we were praying, God reminded me of a story in the Bible. When the Ark of the Covenant was brought face to face with the idol Dagon, Dagon, the fish god, fell flat on its face on the floor in front of the Ark of the Covenant. And suddenly God gave me a revelation through his word. And I started praying, God, in the name of Jesus, just as Dagon, fell flat before the Ark of the Covenant. I pray that today all demons in this house will bow before you and will re release this woman from fear. After we prayed that, I opened my eyes and this woman who wouldn't listen to a word that we were saying stood up, opened her cupboard, and took all her idols, different metals from copper to silver, and put it in a sack and gave it to us and said, Here, please get rid of it. For me at that time i didn't know what to say but the holy spirit that was resident in me guided me how by reminding me of a bible passage it's very important that you read the bible because holy spirit will direct you when you find yourself at a place where you don't know what to do but a lot of times he would do so by quickening a word that has already been sown in your heart. While it's true that as a follower of Jesus, the Holy Spirit is resident in us and that he teaches us in all truth, it's also true that you and I can still resist the Holy Spirit. And when we resist the Holy Spirit, we grieve the Holy Spirit. In Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30, it says, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. It's not only do we grieve the Holy Spirit, but something also happens to us. Our hearts become callous. Suddenly, we are no longer sensitive to the things of God. You're still attending church. You're probably still doing the Christian things that you're supposed to be doing. But you no longer have the sensitivity to what the Holy Spirit is guiding you to do. Have you ever talked to any believer who says, How come you hear God, but I don't hear God? 
It may be a time for a checkup. Have you been hardening your heart to the Lord? Have you been grieving Him? The other thing that we do is when we resist the Holy Spirit is we end up doing things that are not glorifying to the Lord. We end up desecrating this body, which is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Where are you at this point? You're wondering, how do I even know the will of God? Well, number one, have you been reading the word of God? Number two, have you been walking in alignment with what the Holy Spirit is already teaching you to be truth? Or have you been resisting that? You've been praying, Lord, show me your will. But you have been grieving the Holy Spirit. You have not been honoring God with your body. You have been desecrating the temple of God. Then you are not making it possible for you to know the will of God. Because how can you know the will of God when your heart is hardened? For all you know, God has been talking to you all this time. But you cannot perceive him because your heart has become callous. And the solution to that is repentance. I want to pray for you if you are that person. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you in repentance. I ask you to forgive me, Lord. Cleanse me. Forgive me for neglecting your word. Forgive me, Lord, for desecrating your temple. Circumcise my heart, Lord, today. Amen. I'll see you next week for the third key to knowing God's will. God bless.